If you love dogs, how can you possibly vote for Donald Trump? Donald Trump's hatred for dogs is relentless. It is a lifetime of hatred for dogs that he exhibited once again today in an online post attacking former Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan, who is now a member of Rupert Murdoch's incompetent board of directors at Fox. Trump wrote, rumors are flying high that idiot rhino, Paul Ryan, has greatly hurt the credibility of Rupert Murdoch with his ridiculous stance that the 2020 election was all peaches and cream, will be fired like a dog from the Fox board. Whenever Donald Trump uses the phrase, like a dog, it is never with affection. It usually comes after the word fired. We have no idea why Donald Trump is so attached to that phrase, since we know he has never fired a dog or had a dog in his home. President Calvin Coolidge once said something that I never took seriously until Donald Trump, quote, any man who does not like dogs and want them about does not deserve to be in the White House. The man who did not deserve to be in the White House also posted today, I think that Fox board member Rhino Paul Ryan put his boss, Rupert Murdoch, in great legal and monetary jeopardy by convincing him to go against his news anchors and their belief that the 2020 presidential election was rigged and stolen. Ryan is bad luck for Fox. He should either resign or be fired. And there, Donald Trump, has obviously decided to cover up the truth about his false friend Sean Hannity and the out-of-control liar Tucker Carlson, both of whom said in texts and emails obtained by the Dominion lawsuit that they never believed a word of Donald Trump's lies about the 2020 presidential election. Rupert Murdoch is frequently referred to as the owner of Fox, but as Yale business professor Jeffrey Sonnenfeld points out, 61% of the stock of that company is owned by other investors. Each of those investors is now in a position to bring a lawsuit against Rupert Murdoch and the Fox board for the irresponsible and dangerous way they have been managing the company. Those shareholder lawsuits could be far more damaging to Rupert Murdoch than the Dominion lawsuit, which at worst can only cost Rupert Murdoch money. Shareholder lawsuits could ultimately force Rupert Murdoch to lose control of the company. Joining us now is Jeffrey Sonnenfeld, Senior Associate Dean for Leadership Studies at Yale School of Management and a CNBC contributor. Professor Sonnenfeld, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I have been absolutely fascinated uh, by what you've emailed me about the possibility uh, and the opportunity for a shareholder revolt in effect here at Fox. How would that play out? Well, it would play out. There are some major institutional investors, places like Vanguard and others, that own a large stake on our behalf. They are custodians of our money. And there are other individual large owners that control that 61 percent as a derivative lawsuit. That could be quite devastating because this litigation itself, the libel litigation, any any First Amendment uh, and, and defamation attorney you talk to will say they've never seen a case that's this clear, this black and white. That it, that the evidence is so strong, they can't lose this as a one point, you know, five billion dollars that they're asking for. The punitives could be sky high. Who knows how many billions they could ask for? So the shareholders have got to be mad that it's destroyed the value of this company, not just the cash, but whatever credibility Fox News had. It's clearly Fox, not the news now. It 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 it, it uh, so that has great value, and um, they can come together and and make things. I, in fact, I've I've heard from a number of them and. Actually, I'm familiar with a few of the plaintiff law firms that, the, that are actually looking into this. What is the responsibility of the board in a situation like this? The board has two primary duties as a Delaware corporation, which they are. They have a duty of care to be a diligent, alert, informed director and a duty of loyalty. This is not loyalty to the management. This is not loyalty to a, the former president. This is loyalty to the owners and stakeholders of the company. And uh, clearly, they have shown a reckless disregard uh, and lack of managerial oversight. There was, um, uh, there was Charlie Sykes had an interview on Bulwark that you may have seen yesterday with Paul Ryan. It was just devastating. They asked him, well, what line would you draw as a board member where you would quit? And he said, well, I don't know. I, I registered my quiet concern. That 
that's cowardice. That cowardice shows complicity. There's a, 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 a there's a, an Anna Diaz, another board member. Even Rupert Murdoch himself was complaining and being trampled on. It's almost we don't feel sorry for him, but you you almost think it feels like this is a Citizen Kane type situation where he's uh, just you know just lost control. Maybe it's like a Foxenstein. He's created a monster he, he he can't control here, and Lachlan doesn't pay attention to him. Apparently, tramples over to him, and Suzanne Scott, who is the um, the pretty troubled successor to Roger Ailes, uh, is a, a pretty tough executioner. What does Paul Ryan have to fear in the current developments? Well, uh, he certainly uh, he feels he fears a lot of exposure because a directors and officers liability require that they showed a duty of care and a duty of, of, of loyalty. Given that he did not show that, the directors and officers insurance that he had, and we saw this happen in Enron and in some other cases, uh, WorldCom in particular, where they uh, weren't protected by their insurance. They were individually and separately liable for massive damages because the insurance company found that that they had failed in, in their duties to you know be to guaranteed to to be covered by their insurance, so that's a, a tremendous personal exposure there. And of course, the reputation is devastating. And Trump, it's weird that he makes fun of Paul Ryan. You're right. Every one of those anchors said they were disgusted by Trump. Uh, Sean Hannity used the term "disgusted by Trump." They all made fun of 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 uh, the uh, of Giuliani and, and and of course Sidney Powell. They were all making fun of her. And this is Laura Ingraham and and Tucker Carlson. There, there are four really evil, it seems, anchors that were reckless that were pander, pandering and peddling clearly false information, as they said. In all fairness, there are four or five real journalists in there who tried. I feel bad for Shepard Smith before he was sort of ushered out of there, I guess. But he tried to do something, Neil Cavuto, and they were ostracized for this. And there are a few others. There's a guy named Bill Sammons, who is a very uh, admired, I'm sure you know his work, mm -hmm. the political statistician that accurately predicted and you know called the Arizona election. These people were treated really harshly for, for doing the right thing. And uh, the board should hold an investigation they should go after some of the management. There's a general counsel, Viet Din, who has admitted under oath he didn't he didn't fulfill his duties, which is to make sure that they were reinforcing the truth in office there, that that they had people putting out false information. And he knows that he put that they put out false information. He's a very sophisticated attorney. In fact, they have a guy on their board, a guy named Bill but William Burke. Gosh, he should know better. Uh, a very, very uh, prominent law firm uh, and, and that uh, I, can't, I can't imagine anybody, Quinn Emanuel, his law firm, is proud to have William Burke on the board just sitting there and making a half a million dollars a year for four or five meetings a year. What in the world are they doing to earn that money?